Hey there, this is Surfrock66, and today I'm going to be showing off my design for a 1.17 shulker farm that exists in only one dimension. Uh, I know there's a lot of great designs out there uh, that have to do with making shulker farms using nether portals, which shuttles the shulkers off to the nether. Uh, however, there's some complications to that if you have a server where you don't really want to mess around with multi-dimensional farms, uh, this would be appropriate for you, or if you want to be able to build the farm directly in the end at an end city so you didn't have to deal with transporting a shulker all the way to the overworld, this would work for you too. Uh, right now there's no shulker loaded in this farm. I want to show off the components, then I'll show off how the farm works. Uh, so at the core of this uh, is a pretty simple uh, chamber where we have our shulker duplication happening. Uh, this is based off a couple of designs I've seen out there. Uh, El Mangos was the one I started with. Um, there's been a few since there, and I'm going to credit them in the description. But uh, to start with here, we have uh, our snow golems in here, and you need the snow golems because they will fire snowballs at the shulker to keep them open. Uh, when he's open, if he gets hit with the bullet, that's when he has a chance to duplicate. Uh, right in here is a piece of string which is being watched by the observer. When the snowballs cross that, it sends a signal up. Uh, and the shulker will go right there. If you're looking at this, this is a reloading rail. That's an activator rail right there. Activator rails will dump off the mob one block to the right in the direction of movement, so that's where it has to be. Uh, and then uh, an empty minecart will shuffle off. All right, so to that end, um, there are, if you take a look at this, basically six on each side of this same configuration. Now the big problem with doing a single dimensional farm and not using the nether portals is you're gonna lose a lot of the spawnable space for the shulker to duplicate to. Uh, unfortunately, this is less than 50% of the available spaces. However, what I found is the rates of this farm are self-sustaining enough that that's not a problem. Any farm uh, that's gonna use a mechanic like this is gonna suffer from the fact that your shulkers are gonna teleport out instead of duplicating a lot and occasionally they're gonna die off. But uh, I designed this so that it can keep itself sustained. Uh, I tried to get the density packed in a little bit more and you can see some of my previous attempts. But what I figured was that the, uh, the shulker actually will not teleport uh, to a location that is less than two blocks tall. There's just no way to get them to do it. So in order to keep the spawnable spaces here to where the minecarts can pick them up, this is the configuration you have to use. Uh, this thing is built uh, eight blocks in every direction from where the shulker is gonna sit. Uh, and you'll see here on the edges, uh, I actually slabbed it up. And the reason for this is to kind of keep the space for the shulker bullet to be able to travel down. This is important because one of the big flaws with this farm is the shulker bullets will hit the minecarts and break them, which will jam the system up. Fortunately, this farm is almost completely fail safe. What that means is if a minecart stops picking them up and the shulkers cram up in here and the farm stops working, all you need to do to get it started again is figure out where the minecart left, pop another minecart down here in the end, and it'll keep going. It'll even pick up a shulker that's sitting here. So it'll keep itself restarted. Uh, since building this farm, I've had it running for about four days, and I have not yet had to respawn a shulker from scratch. So I think that's pretty important. So the way this works is these rails here take the shulkers out. There's an eight block gap here because shulkers will not teleport eight blocks. And it kind of compresses them down. You can see this one better on the top. It takes the six lines from this layer and compresses them down to this platform here. You see again they eject to the right of the activator rail. From that spot, this rail picks the shulker up and takes them over here to this junction. Now, in the ideal case, it brings them over here. Activator rail dumps them off onto this. The wither rose kills them. Their shell is caught in here and is shuttled down to our collection. You can see, oh, I've had this running for about seven hours. So that's a rough approximation of the rates. But there's some more things going on here. So how do we deal with the fact that the shulkers will occasionally teleport out and need to be repopulated? To account for that, I built something I call the garage. This is six stations, although really only five are used. The sixth one is in case two sneak through before it shuts off. The system here will try to keep a bank of five spare shulkers, okay? They are in here. These are tripwire activated lines. Each one activates the one behind it. And then the fifth one sends a signal over this way, which heads up this unit. And each of these is an AND gate. So if the minecart has a shulker in it, it will activate this, which is the first signal into this AND gate. 
If there's no shulkers in the garage, that's the second signal. If both signals are activated, the minecart is diverted this way, and the first five shulkers will fill up these spots. Now the fifth spot here is the one that will turn the system off, although occasionally two will sneak through. Um, even if you get a situation where two shulkers happen at the same time and they end up on the same rail, it's not going to be a problem. So you have the garage here. What is the trigger for sending one out of the garage? Well, first of all, in order to detect the shulkers, like we talked about before, we have our snowmen. The snow golems are firing snowballs off. If the observer sees them, it's going to send a pulse. One thing I find here, though, is because the shulkers tend to sit around for longer than the nether portal design farms, once the shulker teleports, the golems will still track them for about five seconds, and so they'll stop firing snowballs. So you got a lot of false positives. What I had to do is use this uh, pulse extender designed by El Mango. And I'm going to have a link to this video in the description. It's going to have two items in it. I just had two hoppers in here. This is going to keep the signal alive for about 22 seconds. Okay. Once the signal shuts off, that's going to send an activation down here, which is going to send the next shulker. Additionally, I used an etho hopper clock here. Uh, if this is already on, it will do nothing. But if for some reason a shulker did not get sent, about every 90 seconds, it will actually send an activation signal. So this farm is self-restarting. To that end, this is a master kill switch. Get rid of this, no shulkers will be sent. Signal to send the shulker stops, they'll be parked in the garage, and all is fine. This entire system can be sustained with one shulker. Uh, my plan is to actually then divert manually a couple of extra just as spares, but from a single shulker, this, this whole system uh, will be activated. Talking dimensions here, uh, the raw dimensions that you're going to need are 37 wide, 69 long, and 22 tall. Although, if you really want to be paranoid, teleporting shulkers is a real pain. Uh, having eight blocks in every direction on the outside of this would probably be a pretty reasonable precaution. Uh, as soon as Lightmatica comes out for this snapshot, I'm in uh, 21W18A right now. I'm going to make a schematic of this avail available, but the important thing to note is that in almost every instance, a redstone block can be replaced by a uh, solid block with a lever. Uh, you have to do extensive spawn proofing on this. Buttons everywhere, levers everywhere, slabs everywhere, because if the shulkers can find even one spot to teleport to, they will take it. I mean, I can see right here, it hasn't been a problem yet, but I forgot to do these. So, a couple more things. Uh, you'll see here, this is, if for whatever reason a shulker were to bounce backward, we don't want them going back in the system, so we should just keep them here. Uh, I'm going to slow down and at the end of the video I'll kind of pause and silently look at each one of these components so you can see them and try to recreate them. Uh, the last thing is the reloader line here actually has an activator rail. If the case happens where a false positive signal comes through and a second shulker is sent when one doesn't need to be sent, this activator here will dump the shulker out back in the system and it'll just get scooped up. Uh, it is pretty rare that you're going to get a situation where you're losing shulkers. The only real problem here is you have to check the minecarts every once in a while. So I'll come through from this side, just kind of peek at them. Uh, usually I'm only replacing one or two. If one of these minecarts over here gets stopped up, uh, you will get a whole bank of shulkers over here, put the minecart back, and it'll be activated. Oh, I, I take it back. There is one more thing. Uh, for this diversion line, uh, if a shulker is taken over to go back to the garage, that's going to leave you minus a minecart. So over here we have a, a detector rail that sends a signal back, which will actually trigger a dispenser to put another minecart on the track. Uh, when the minecarts dump off a new shulker, they are broken here and are brought back into the system. It is almost perfectly self-sustaining. You know, you lose a minecart every once in a while, but I haven't had to replace them very frequently. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is spawn one shulker, and you can kind of see the routine that's going to happen here. All right, here we go. He's in there. You saw him duplicate. First one's off. Now the first five are going to go to the garage. Let's see where to go. Okay, there he is. What I call the compression line is picking him up. We have the AND signal, which sends him off to the garage. You can see up there the light is on. So the system thinks we have a shulker in the chamber. First garage guy is right there.
I always get a little nervous starting it, even though the system can be started with one. You know, that's your that's your safety net. As soon as you start getting more, it's a little less hairy. All right, there's two. Oh, see, we had a false positive there. I'm still trying to troubleshoot that a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. Because you see the minecart's empty. The shulker ejected. Without taking any damage, he's fine. He's just going to get shuffled off again and get sent back to the garage. Here comes one. The trick with this is it's a uh, variable duration resettable pulse extender, and that was the trick. That's why we had to use such a complicated pulse extender here. The resettable bit was really the thing that made it more complicated. There's our golems firing again. Ooh, yeah, okay, we have three in the garage right now. I see another one coming through. The way the mechanic works, as I understand it, is the longer the shulkers are in here, the more chance of a duplication will fail and instead result in a teleport as the shulker in the chamber takes damage. And so the goal is to get them out of here, get them out of this 17 by 17 by 17 block as fast as possible. But with the minecarts, there's only so much you can do. So you do get a lot more teleports than you would in another farm where they're taken out pretty immediately. That being said, it's not enough to keep the rate below self-sustaining. There we go. We have five in the garage, a sixth snuck through before the system shut off. No big deal. Um, I kind of would like to see one get sent. But first of all, now that those are all done, the shulkers will be taken over here to the killing chambers. We'll wait for one. Oh, there we go. I don't know if we got one there or not, but either way, there it goes. Okay, so it's working. I would like to see one get sent, and I may manually trigger it. He's still in there. I'm, I'm looking over here. He's still in there. Let's send another one just to demonstrate the system. Once we send that, the tripwires cycle the garage. You can see that minecart's empty, so he was ejected from the minecart. He's somewhere in the system right now. He'll get plucked along. Now, every once in a while, a shulker will still be targeting the golems when uh, it teleports out. Because of that, it'll fire a bullet. The bullet will bounce around. Hopefully, it'll hit something, but it also may break a minecart, which is what will gum the system up. Given the fact that this thing is free shulker boxes for almost as long as you would want, it's a pretty reasonable compromise with a decent iron farm. I mean, the system is pretty free to keep running. So, uh, and the fact that the minecarts are almost self-sustaining up there, you could make a taller stack of chests and this thing will keep running forever. I've seen it get down as low as two shulkers before. And of course, theoretically, if you just got really bad luck, it is possible you could run out of shulkers, which is why I'm going to keep a manual reserve of uh, two in minecarts off to the side. But I do think this is a pretty effective single dimensional design for a shulker duplication farm that could be built in the end. In fact, you could build it in the nether too. The only reason you couldn't build it in the nether is because the snow golems would uh, not survive. However, I could imagine that you instead would use a player firing snowballs at the shulker. The whole point of him is he has to stay open and he'll stay open if he thinks he's taking damage, which the snowballs do without actually damaging him. So if you had an AFK player and could resupply him with snowballs, you could build this in the nether and instead of the, the golems, you use a player. So that kind of shows the, uh, the system here. I'm gonna to try to get just a view of some of the components in here and pause a little bit. So if anyone wanted to take a look and get an idea of this, remember this chamber is 17 by 17 by 17. If 
you can come right in here if your snow golems die off, break these two, drop them back in, place these back, you're off to the races again. The system here, dumps them all out to the right and collects them to be killed. Tripwire system here for detecting when a minecart has a shulker in it for when we need to divert. The trigger for the reloading system. Hopper chains. And the garage circuits. I know there's a lot here. There's no way to do a block by block tutorial of this, but my hope is a lightmatic, a schematic uh, will make this a lot easier. You'll see these are being powered by uh, redstone torches. This off switch here would stop the pulse signal for sending the next shulker. So you remove that block, goes away. You have your hopper clock here, and this sends a pulse whenever the signal turns off. And this again is the resettable variable duration pulse extender. All right, there's going to be links to all of the references that I used for this in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, I'm absolutely happy to hear it, and uh, I hope this is useful to someone out there. So thanks a lot. This is SurfRock66. Have a great day.